Welcome to Mineral Springs Park in Pekin, Illinois for IHSA Class A Softball. Hello everyone, I'm Ann Penstone and I'm so glad to be here with you tonight in the silver anniversary of this tournament championship. Along with me is a six-time championship coach himself, formerly of Casey Westfield, Denny Thronberg. And Denny, it's great to have you here, but it's so strange to see you behind the mic. Well, I'm a little more nervous over here, Ann, than I would be out there, but I'll try to do my best. Of the 25 years of this tournament, 12 times one of the two teams playing tonight has won, Casey Westfield or Rock Island Alleman. Here's the road Casey Westfield took to the final. Well, you can see, Ann, that it's a road that was based primarily on defense. A lot of zeros on the right-hand side, two shutouts in the first two games of the tournament, so I look for a low-scoring game tonight. You don't win games without great players. Two of the senior standouts you're going to see here on the screen and players that you've had. Well, I know these kids well. Uh, Casey Shover, a great second baseman, very, very few mistakes. We hope a lot of balls go that way for her. And Aaron Montgomery, one of the premier catchers in the state, headed to the University of Illinois next year, so looking forward to it. Well, Denny's successor, Dave Shover, talked earlier about the keys to the game and the role reversal this season. No secrets there. Uh, Allman's got a strong team, a great team. Uh, we'll have to play one of our better games, if not our best game of the year, and we understand that and talk some about it today. Um, handling their pressure will be one of the keys, but uh, we've had our backs up against the wall, it seems like, uh, all weekend, so hopefully we'll continue to come through in those situations. Rock Island Allman comes from the traditionally strong Quad City Airs, and here's their road. Once again, as you look at this road, you're going to see very good pitching, very good defense, very, very tight game. So as I've said before, I think it'll be a low scoring game, probably come down to a break or two. Three young ladies were keying on tonight. Jen Duvajunk, the anchor on the first base side, and the two pitchers, Karen Marie Pena and Jennifer Oaks. And the key thing, the ACL injury to Karen Marie. Well, we've all heard about the injury. We're very, very pleased to see her here. I think it's very important that she play. I think it speaks volumes for her character to be able to come back from an injury like this and play here tonight. If Coach Jay Hatch wins tonight, his school will tie the record by this gentleman to my left, having six state championships. And here's what he had to say would be the keys to be beating Casey Westfield. You know, obviously you're going to have to play good defense. They're going to make you uh, make plays on defense, and, and you're going to have to earn your runs. And, you know, I anticipate a pretty low-scoring game, and, you know, hopefully it'll be something that, that where with the team that wins it wins the game rather than the other team losing it. But, uh, you know, sometimes in this level and this kind of competition, that's what happens. Um, you know, we... We have a lot of respect for their program. This is the first time we've ever played in the finals, I think. We've played a lot in the, the semifinals, so it should be fun. It's a perfect night for softball, and we can't wait to bring it to you. We'll be back with the starting lineups right after this. There's a great look at the beautiful scene here in Mineral Springs Park as we get ready to bring you the state championship game in Class A. There you see the umpires for tonight's contest, a great achievement for them as well. At first, John Heap, Gil uh, Thorman at third base, and Willie Brown at the plate. It is beautiful tonight. You see the Mineral Springs Park, temperature 75, a perfect no wind to speak of, humidity low, and it has been beautiful all weekend. Leading off will be Leanne Butcher, that's hitting 505, a lofty average, just junior center fielder, great speed, bats from the left side, and we're just about ready to get underway in this Class A championship game, and here goes Karen Marie. And right, like you said, a slap attempt. Attempted bun on the first pitch. I, I wouldn't be surprised to, to see it again, and... Um, you know, early, especially with these first two hitters, you're probably going to see something on the ground just to see how they're going to handle it. Third and first, way in on the infield, of course, and they're probably protecting more the pitcher than usual because of inability to run. But it's amazing to see your pitch. There's no apparent injury. Did you make a move? No, it says the ump, Willie Brown, and you know Willie Brown. He up behind the plate for you a couple of state championships. 1990, I remember. In an unusual game, I believe he was at second base in that game. I still recall that one. It's a great honor for these umps as well to be here. They've picked by their peers and the rating system, and that ball right down the pipe. Count goes one and two. So Pena quickly ahead of Butcher. She'll be right on top of it, but uh, you know, she's not going to waste too many pitches. Her control is always excellent. Well, I think if you're injured, you certainly don't want to play any pitch any more balls than you have to. Right. That ball slapped foul right behind the booth here. So the count stays at one and two. I can tell you, as a pitching instructor, I, uh, I have the utmost respect for her even going out there with that type of injury, and I'm certainly glad to see that she's going to be healthy, and after surgery, she's going to recover some rehab, and she's going to go on to play softball, and that's what we're all in this for, to get the kids to play. Absolutely, and of course, we want to reassure all you fans, she's in no danger of further injury. Rise and change, goes high with it, even to count it two and two. You know, no matter how many times you've been here, you're going to be a little nervous. I don't care oh. if you're the most experienced uh, <laughs> pitcher in the world, first inning, first batter, you got some jitters. 
I'll tell you what, the left side of the infield and the outfield is having a lot of trouble with the sun right now. It's peeking through the trees, and they've got their gloves up shielding it. So there may be some fielding problems here early as well. The ball's low, and the count goes full. So not what uh, Pena wanted to start out, but uh, Leanne Butcher making a great at bat out of this one. Full count, first batter, state Class A championship game. Two powerhouses, Rock Island Allum and the home team and the Casey Westfield Warriors. Down the pipe, they're high, and we've got a walk, and our first back our base runner is on, on a pass. Well, leadoff walk is certainly, I'm sure, uh, not something that uh, Coach Hatch wanted to see early, but, uh, you know, that's not unusual. First inning, as I said, is always difficult. I think you'll see the sacrifice bunt coming up right here, and I wouldn't be surprised if they get it down fair. Uh, Butcher will take a real good look at going to third. This is Corey Shover. Corey, yes. Corey's a sophomore. She's the shortstop. And she goes for it. Uh, no, pulls it back, and everybody stops where they were. Corey was the starting third baseman last year as a freshman. We put her in the lineup about halfway through the H4 in this tournament, and this year she takes over the shortstop role. Somebody that she took over for, I seem yeah. to remember. I Little know. relation. <laughs> that, she made an attempt at it. That ball thrown into right field, but uh, backed up nicely by Lavery on the throw down by Beulio. Well, one thing you probably will uh, see in this game, and I, I would say I would be very surprised to see any type of fundamental mistake by these two teams. Uh, Dave does a wonderful job with Casey Westfield, as does Jay. I don't think you'll see a fundamental mistake. As Jay had mentioned, it's going to be an event. It's going to be something that either gets manufactured or someone gets a break, and you sure hope it's somebody winning rather than losing a ball. Game. Right. Again, the bunny's down for baseman. Julio, oh, and drop. Very unusual by Dubajunk and now down to third and everybody around and advancing a heads up base running by Schober and goes down to second on the throw to third. So runners at second to third on what was appearing to be a sacrifice bunt. And Coach Jay Hatch is going to come out and talk to his team. First uh, inning jitters, here we go. And uh, you know I've been through this many times before. I uh, one time looked at this at how many times in the state tournament it's the first inning that is such a crucial, a crucial Four, situation. Okay. And uh, Coach Hatch, I know in this situation is going to say, settle down. We're going to try to make some things happen here. But, um, you know, th the key there for Casey Westfield, obviously, was getting the sacrifice bunt down. If you don't get it down fair, none of the throwing the ball away happens. So, once again, fundamentally, do your job. Get your job done. Make the defense make a play. So, uh, you know, it's a situation here where um, I'm sure uh, Pena has been in this situation many times before. Uh, not something that uh, you want to be in, but she's been here before. Brings up Aaron Montgomery for Casey Westfield. Uh, probably one of the best clutch hitters oh. we'll see in this tournament. I've seen her so many years. It's like she's been here forever. And I tell you what, this is one fine ball player, an outstanding catcher, a great clutch hitter, and she comes through when you need it. Right now she's got two ducks on the pond at second and third. Would like to bring the initial run across early, which has been unusual in the tournament. They're usually late. <laughs> down the pipe, good. Canyon comes down real hard with a nice strike. Of course, that was an error on on the second baseman, Carly Burt, on the throw across the diamond as Dubajunk was in to field the bunt. Montgomery batting over 400. Takes her inside, trying to clear off the plate a little bit and evens the count at one and one. The key to that play also probably was the fact that Corey Shover was allowed to get to second base, which takes away your force at second. Also, a base hit could probably get you two, which would be crucial in this game. Well, and he can't really walk Montgomery intentionally because no. you have to face Hickox, who's been just a terror at the plate. A little bit low. So getting behind, two and one. I don't think she's going to give her anything real good to hit unless it's a mistake. I think she's going to try to stay on the corner. If she loads him up, she loads him up. But I, I don't think she wants to go down the middle here. The sun right now is a real factor on the left side. It's hard to see from here. And there it goes out the left field. Katie Gano underneath and making the throw, coming all the way home. Good arm, good arm. Blocked the plate. Boy, I tell you what, Diulio thought she might have the plate blocked, and that's what she's asking for, but called safe by Willie Brown, so the out to the fly ball on the left. Runner tagged in advance. Shover goes on to third, and here we have the run coming home. Look at Diulio's position. Great position there. Well, you're going to see the replay there, and as, as you see it, the only thing she could have done is possibly got her hand in between the two legs, but it was a great job of blocking the plate. But it was also a very good slide going around it and trying to get it with just your hand, and I know one thing that, that we all teach there is you find an opening and you get in that opening, and that's what she was trying to do, I'm sure, but uh, it's a big run. 
It is a huge run, and now we've got a runner on third. We do have an out, and Coach Jay Hatch had come to check with Willie to make sure, you know, that there had been a tag, and he said, yep, she was there and safe, and it's hard to tell with all the dust around. So when it's settled, we've got one out, and the batter is the first baseman, Melissa Hickok. She had two hits yesterday, uh, hit the ball well today, and I'm sure in this situation trying to drive a ground ball through the infield. Looks it back in for a strike. Nice comeback pitch by Karen Marie. Well, this situation where Payne is looking for the strikeout. She's really going to try to go after the strikeout here, keep the ball in the infield. And once again, go back to that sun. It was a difficult catch to make in left field. And it was a great throw. One yes, bounce just like you ask it to be, right on target. Did everything you asked. That's oh, a nice strike. Great pitch right there, right back in on the hands. Nothing she could do with that pitch. She's got her in the hole here, oh, too. I, I would look for something away and probably out of the strike zone. Tall batters, Hickok, probably keep it low and out, like Denny said. Tries a change, it's dribbled up. Minnie Smith gobbles it up, goes to first, gets her out, but the run does score, so we have the fielder's choice. Offensively, uh, you know, I'm sure uh, Coach Shover will be pleased with that. She did her job. That's called situational hitting, and, you know, we've practiced that thousands of times, and I'm sure as have everybody else, but... Uh, you go in a practice situation, you put runners at third base, and you put a pitcher out there, and you say hit a ground ball. And uh, that's your job. When, you know, I know we've done it thousands of times. Uh, uh, you know, you work on that, but that's key, and it got you a run right there. Well, and Denny, your teams have always been known for being creating things. I mean, you're always being aggressive. You're always following up. There's no waste of time. And, boy, when you get on those base pass, you don't stand around. You move. Well, the important thing is, is that you can't control what they do, but you certainly can control what you do. And if you don't put the ball in play, you don't have a chance. So the key is put it in play and see what happens. This is Katie Hanselman. And that's a strike. So Karen Marie really coming out stronger than she started the game. She's throwing some smoke right now. She'll pick it up as she goes here. Um, she has great composure. Katie Hanselman is the DH. She's batting in place of pitcher Laura Fisher. Tries to change, popped up, short the third. Krista Dioli underneath of it and makes the squeeze for the third out. So one base on ball, some heads up base running, and two runs manufactured by Casey Westfield. So after half an inning, it's two to nothing. Alleman knows how to hit. So here's leadoff hitter Mindy Smith coming out. The senior leadoff hitter, she's the shortstop for the Pioneers, and they certainly want to get some action on the base pass so they can do a little manufacturing of their own. They're going to want to make something happen. This is Laura Fisher uh, for Casey Westfield, sophomore, 22-0 uh, in the season, 0 0.22 ERA. Um, you know, first time in state championship games. So I'm sure there's a little jitters there, too. But once again, it goes back to what I told you. At the top of the first, I think, is really crucial in a state tournament. Tries this quick hit. No, she smiles. She laughed as she ripped, and it's... Smith with one strike, the count evens. Goes to one and two. Well, they're gonna try to put the ball in play, uh, same as Casey Westfield, and see if they can make something happen here early. Eyes and swings and misses on the way down to first, so the first out by registered on the strikeout by Laura Fisher. Did you get to Mindy, Swi Mindy Smith? Rise ball up and away, that's where she should throw that pitch right there, and one and two, she's ahead in the count. Should be a rise ball up and away to the left-hand slapper. The defense, uh, you see third to first, Roberts, that's Corey Shaver, and Casey Shaver in the infield, Hickox, in the outfield, Hupp, Butcher, and Sinclair, and the battery, Fisher and Montgomery. Up to bat, Krista Diulio, a senior third baseman, who squeezed that last out in the top half to get them out of the jam. Uh, Fisher's throwing that rise ball now, boy, I tell you what. Rise ball, she's got her hopping up there. It, it's really been moving throughout the whole tournament. I've been able to watch most of the games from right here behind home plate. So uh, as long as she stays ahead in the count, though, she's pretty tough to hit. Those again. Now, Denny, when you teach a rise ball, is that a natural motion that occurs for a pitcher? Or is it something you have to learn? You have to learn it. Uh, anytime that you're working on movement, it's something you have to learn. It goes back to basic fundamentals, actually the things that we worked on all winter. Pays off, just a sophomore. What a fireball she is. There comes a nice pitch on the outside corner. And the batting lineup for the Pioneers. Smith at short, Diulio at third, Burt Duvajonk the first baseman, and Katie Diulio, Lavery, Hutchinson, Umbrella, and Gano in left. There's your lineup. And goes on the inside corner. Boy, she is moving that ball around and quickly two strikeouts. So Casey Westfield coming out strong on the heels of Laura Fisher. 
This is a surprise, uh, surprising first inning so far for Casey Westfield. Uh, they've been giving up. Uh, we talked about it when Dave and I came in. The last couple of years, we've had trouble the first inning. And um, here's two strikeouts to get started. So Laura seems to be on top of the game. And Erin uh, Montgomery doing the job here behind the plate. Yeah, she framed that ball really well to help out the young. Such a smart catcher. I love watching her play. She's quick. She's fast. Some people think of slow people as catching. Not uh -huh. this young lady. You need quickness behind the plate uh, anymore. Years ago, you might have been able to get a bye with that, but not with the, with the movement the pitchers have anymore. You need quickness. And you know when you call the pitchers, you have a catcher like Montgomery. It really makes your job easier. Right. She's doing a great job. You know, she's uh, become very knowledgeable behind the plate. She called the pitches all last summer to get ready for the spring, and uh, she knows what she's doing. Carly Burt, the second baseman. Fouls back. And again, Fisher goes ahead, so she has yet to be behind any batter. In fact, got the first two on strikeouts. Could look for something here, uh, uh, probably not right down the middle, I would uh, think not, uh, uh, with two outs and nobody on here in the first inning. Once again, if you look into left field, boy, a fly ball out there is going to be tough to handle. Sun just coming down right now. Casey Westfield with a 2-0 lead on only a walk in the top half of the first, and Rock Island Alleman trying to come back right now. Two outs. Two runs on no hits. Yeah. Just the opportunity of putting the ball in play. That was the key. And running behind it, yeah. never let making somebody make a play on you. And that ball just a hair low. Laura Fisher wanted it, but the count is full, so this is the first batter to work anything on Fisher and make her work. Situation here where you throw a strike, you get two outs in the first inning, two run lead. You don't want to rally started uh, if you're talking on the defensive part here. So you, you know, you try to throw the ball in there and see what happens. Let your defense make a play. Hey, ball four. Walk, so we have even up on that score, and we have a first base runner for the Pioneers in the person of Carly Burt down to first, and that will bring up Jen Dubajunk, the senior first baseman. This young lady's now standing hitter. When you bat number four in the lineup for Alleman, you know you can hit, and uh, you better get a little bit deep. This lady's liable to hit one in the gap somewhere. And she hits it, but got up underneath that rise ball. Coming down hard, we've got short and left, and that ball is dropped, coming between Schober and Huck. Going on to third and heads up. The Pioneers also do the same thing that the Warriors did. We've got runners on second and third on the very difficult play down the line at third. Once again, just mentioned it, the sun. You can see Hupp coming in and shielding all the way. Actually, that's a situation where our Coach Schober's talking right now. We'd like, like for the shortstop to, uh, you can see by the replay that they ran together. Actually, that's probably an easier catch for the shortstop because she's going away from the sun. There were two outs, the runner should have been moving all the way, so second and third should not be a problem. Walk once again, got her in that position. Now a base hit, get the game tied back up. Well, Katie DiUlio, the catcher, up to bat. Ball goes outside, they're not going to give her a whole lot either. This is a fine young hitter also. It's a situation where you have an open base. Um, uh, Montgomery's probably thinking, don't throw it right down the middle here, and we'll see what happens. You don't want to waste this opportunity. You don't get many against Casey Westfield. Whoa, she ripped and turned on that one. And <laughs> And the Pioneer fans applaud her. Might want to take a little bit off that pitch <laughs> next time. But uh, yeah, she, was, she was out in front of that oh. one in a hurry. I was uh, fearing for the people in the top row of the bleachers over there. Well, her eyes were just so focused right before that she was talking to the coach. I'll tell you what, she has all business up there. Probably see a pitch away somewhere here if she gets it in the right location after pulling that ball so well. Change up high and outside. Oh, well. Just like you call it, Burt's at third, <laughs> Dubajonk is at second, and at the plate, catcher Katie DiUlio. Two and one to count. <laughs> Give a little change of speed and again, high and away. Two, three and one, so she's got a chance to pass if she wants and set up the force out. Situation also here where as a hitter, you're looking in one zone. You're looking up for a ball right down the middle. The count's three one, looking one zone. If you get it, drive it. Well, she can. There's a big gap in left center if she can hit it there. She turned on it again, but just foul again. She got the pitch she wanted. She did. Good-looking 3-1 pitch, just out ahead of it a little bit here early. Now we got her full. I think she's looking for something in the strike zone, and I think I'm looking at Coach Shover, and he's saying don't put it down the <laughs> middle of the plate. So he's, he's looking at the open base. Now you got to kind of be a... Use a little discretion because you don't want to put a situation where you can fill the bases and leave it up. But got to be a good one. Diulio's a junior. Full count runners going two outs. Foul to back. So a good at bat. Fisher kicks the dirt. She's like, darn, I wanted that one. 
Actually, that was nothing more than a challenge pitch, and it was right <laughs> down the middle. And if she'd have got a base hit, I think uh, Dave would have probably jumped uh, out of the dugout on that one. Because um, actually, she doesn't want it down the middle. She'll give her the walk before she gives uh, something real good to hit. But uh, this is a real nice hitter. Could be tied here in a minute. I thought Fisher's a little generous there. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Turns on it. Boy, she's got the timing down on this, but she's yet to put it between the white lines. Coach moving real well down there at third base, <laughs> I thought. Hopped out of that, uh, away from that foul ball quickly. So, uh, she's right on the ball. Once again, there's uh, three strikes in a row and uh, trying to not throw ball four, but uh, still not put it down the middle of the plate. Well, it's a good at bat as you see Coach Jay Hatch, and there's Laura Fisher doing a little housekeeping on the mound. This would be crucial for all of them, though, if they could just get something on the board back here in the first inning, because, you know, they feel like they probably gave away those two runs early, and they'd like to get something back on the board right here. Of course, a big momentum builder for Casey Westfield if they get out of this inning. The Fisher's been in a tough situation this tournament before. Base is jammed and got out. Off the, the end of the bat over to Corey Shover and quickly down to Hickox for the out. So Casey Westfield does get out of the jam. And no harm done, although there were two runners manufactured and two strikeouts. So after one complete inning, we've got two to nothing, Casey Westfield. Well, the sun's finally going down, but you can see the difficulty the left side of the infield and outfield has on that gap where the light shines through the trees. It's been a little bit of a nemesis, and the last half inning showed that as short and left had a little bit of difficulty. And shortstop right now with the hand up. Up to bat, Casey Shover. Number five, the senior piles one out to left field and going foul and hustling after it was Katie Gano, but just out of her reach over the fence. Casey's been hitting the ball real well here for Casey Westfield here in the second half of the season in the sectional tournament. I watched her hit two balls over the center fielder's head, and um, you know she has really nice power uh, from the right side, very compact swing, and uh, like I said, defensively, we've just put her out there forever, it seems like, playing it. If this name is sounding familiar, fans, it's because she has a sister playing short and her dad's the new head coach and he'd been an assistant for several years. So it's a real family affair down there in Casey West. It is. He's also got a young son coming along <laughs> that'll be a great player one of these days. So we'll probably see Dave with a little ball in his hand one of these days before too long. Well, Karen Marie Pena did a great job of coming back strong after a real difficult, tough uh, first inning and started throwing some smoke. And she's throwing harder right now. And I know that she's been known as a strikeout pitcher. After the knee injury, she's made an incredible comeback and seems to have gotten stronger as the inning went on. She'll do fine. One thing about all of them is they won't panic. Two runs, they won't panic. Some teams, they, they might a little bit, but they've been here so many times, they, they won't panic with this 2-0 deficit. Two and one, the count. <laughs> High and outside. Delio slams it back. Boy, she wanted that one last time. She turned on so many balls. The catcher, Katie DeLeon, just couldn't get one to go between the white lines and advance the runner. So I know she's disappointed, but she turned that into aggressiveness here behind the plate. Nice pitch, foul to the right side, and out of play. Once again, she doesn't want to walk the leadoff batter. She's going to try to do everything. This is the person you got to make put it in play. If you check statistics, you will find if you walk the leadoff batter, so many times. And I would hate to even guess on the exact percentage, but it's way up there is how many times that batter scores. Count is full. Leadoff batter as we get a ball being thrown back into play. They, somebody retrieved it. The fans that are out here tonight, this gorgeous night in Mineral Springs Park, they do such a great job at this facility of getting ready when it's inclement weather, and it's been nice to have such beautiful weather all weekend this year. Three and two down the pipe and hit in the right gap center. And caught there out there, a nice play by Mary Kate Lombardy, the senior, going away over her right shoulder. That ball was smoked, and uh, <laughs> as I told you, she's got she got real good pop, and she goes to right center real well. But I thought the right fielder made an outstanding play on that ball, drop stepped and got to it. And so once again, it goes back to things that you always are concerned about. Alleman, I've said this for years: when you play Alleman, you won't play two or three good players. You will play nine good players. They they will be one. Well, you can put ten when you put the coach in there because they're very well coached, and they will have nine good players on the field. If you, it's hard to tell from this angle, but we'll talk about the field a little bit later. As Pena faces uh, the unusual pitch in the dirt, Amy Sinclair just had to dirty it up a little bit so it wasn't so tough to grab. There you see Sinclair's batting average, a lofty 371 batting in the seventh spot. It's another one of the seniors at Casey Westfield's worked real hard to earn a spot in here and uh, you know getting her dues, I guess, paid back here in senior year playing in the championship game in the state tournament. She's the right fielder, so she sees a bunch of action with the tough pitchers that you come out of down there. We've seen some pitching, uh, you know, and probably uh, hoping to put some balls in play here. I think Dave, when I talked to him earlier, was uh, hoping to see something a little quicker than what we have seen. 
One and one the count, one out. Change of speed, and oh, it fooled Sinclair. She goes around and strike two, so Pena with a good pitch. That's the pitch she threw that kept me awake a few nights, I can <laughs> recall. She's got a great change up. As you can see there, out on the front foot, way out in front, fooled. She's got great motion on that. It's a standing pitch. One and two goes the rise ball high. Actually came, actually came right back with the change up there. That, uh, she was trying to throw a little bit off speed again. <laughs> I'll tell you, when she's got that working, you need two bats up there. So. <laughs> now, if you spin around, can you hit it yeah. the second time around? <laughs> We've tried that. <laughs> Evens the count at two and two. <laughs> and strikes her out swinging. There's the rise ball. That's her good rise ball right there. Yeah. Yeah. She'll, I would bet anything she'll settle down here, you know, and uh, two might be a large number, a large number before this over. Here's your replay, and watch the rise ball. She gets under it real well. Boy, she got through the hips real nice on that, and uh, get, got the spin that you're looking for, and got the little pop on the ball. That brings up junior third baseman Tracy Roberts. Two outs. Tries the bunt, fouls it back. Diulio goes to grab it. I was thinking as we saw that camera angle by a great crew out here from the, from the rear, for young pitcher to see that hip turn so crucial. Oh, I, I think that this is a great teaching tool. I, I have taken tapes home from state tournaments and showed them to young pitchers. In fact, I'll be showing some tapes at clinics this summer, and, and you can just it's great to watch it from center field. Oh, and one the count. Pena comes. Rise ball. Oh, and two. So getting ahead quickly here to Tracy Roberts, the number eight batter in the lineup for Casey Westfield. Tracy Roberts, young lady, it's a kind of a newcomer to our starting lineup here and a junior. It's worked real hard to find her way into the starting lineup here. And Change. Wasted up, one and two. So Pena settling down really nicely and the Sun very quickly, the only person that's having to deal with right now is the shortstop, Mindy Smith, and it won't be but another half inning before it's a non-factor and the lights will be on and that'll be it. I wouldn't be surprised to see another rise ball here. She threw the chain, she might come back with the rise. There it is. You know, I think you've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> two well, and two, and you don't even coach this good. Knowing what's coming and hitting it are two different things. Oh, so yeah. true, so true. You're 40 feet away, the ball's coming at speeds of 80, you know, what, 50, 50 to 60 miles per hour. It comes in a hurry, as they say. She's bringing it. Ball well held out to right field. Mary Kate Lombrey settles under it and makes the grab. So one, two, three, they go down here in the top half of the second. And it's two to nothing. Casey Westfield with Alleman coming to bat. Mary Kate Lombrey turns on that pitch and sends it foul, pulls it. The keys of the game. Don't change a whole lot in fast pitch. They pretty much are occurrences all the time. And here they are. Who can generate offense? I think it's going to be very important here. I'd say, who blinks first? Who makes the first mistake? We've already seen a mistake that, you know, cost a run or two. And who's going to get the timely hit? That's out to right field. Amy Sinclair squeezes it for the out. Hurry up and wait. Well played. She was there in a hurry, made it look really easy. Retires Mary Kate Lawry for the first out of the inning. We've seen quite a bit of contact already. I think that, you know, people are going to move the ball around. I'm, I'm sure uh, Coach Shover is not sitting down there uh, very calmly uh, thinking those two are enough. So you really don't know what's going to happen. You know Alleman's going to put it in play. Now the left-hander's coming up here, and you'll see some speed. This is Jana Hutchinson. She's the DH, and she's batting in place of Karen Marie Pena. Batting from the left side here, I would look for some type of slap or bunt and try to get the ball down on the ground and, and make Casey Westfield have to make a play. Batting average is a little under 200, but she's had some crucial hits in this tournament, but now she pops up to Corey Shover, who squeezes it for out number two. That was a lot tougher play than anybody would uh, expect just because it was in that remaining sun. You can see it there, but uh, once again, left-hand batter pops the ball up. It's uh, like a gift. You're glad to get it. You want those left-handers hammering that thing in the ground. Coaches want it down and dirty, and uh, fielding coaches want it to be up in the air and make it easy. And well, I'm sorry, that brings up Rose Umbrello, the center fielder. We always tell the kids, uh, you know, three things have to happen if you hit it on the ground. You know, you got to catch it, throw it, and catch it again. If you hit it in the air, all you got to do is catch it. Swing out to Shover, who comes quickly. Oh, and nice stride and stretch by Hickox, who does what she does so well. And three up and three down for Alleman here in the bottom half of the second. So after two complete innings, it's still two to nothing. Casey Westfield in the championship game. Back at Mineral Springs, where pitching is the essence of fast pitch. 
Well, I think one very important thing here, Laura Fisher, rise ball pitcher, she's one of the most competitive kids I've ever been around. And Pena, of course, coming back from the torn ACL and being able to pitch is remarkable in itself. You know, as a pitching instructor, I just, but I really like those kind of kids, you know, knowing they're not going to get hurt by doing this, but wanting to come, want the ball and want to come out and throw. Pena prepares to pitch to Neely Huff, the number nine batter in the KZ Westfield Warrior lineup. And it's a strike. This is, this is a freshman, a uh, young lady that got in the lineup here earlier. Uh, kind of makes me think back because uh, she has an older sister named Trisha who played for me up here in the state tournament a few times. So this is uh, the, her sister. This is Neely. Good pitch. 0-2. We should clarify that Karen Marie currently has a completely destroyed, basically, ACL. It's gone. And it, she cannot do any further damage to this knee. She's in no danger. And she will have corrective surgery this coming Thursday. And we look forward to a great career following successful surgery for her. Yes, and the most important word to her after that surgery will be, I just told her out there a little bit ago when we were talking, it's called rehab. <laughs> so she will be rehabbing to make that thing as strong as as before and hopefully have a great career. So many kids actually come back stronger. That ball is popped up. Duba Junk grabs it for out number one. Foul territory, but it's out nevertheless, and Neely goes down on the pop up. Back to the top of the order for Casey Westfield. This is uh, Leanne Butcher, and she can fly. This is the one if people watched state tournament last year. This is a young lady I put into pinch run that scored on the uh, three RBI single in right field that tied the game. <laughs> she can fly. That was the one where I was wondering if she really left on time. <laughs> yes, she does. She has. Look at those wheels. My God. Not a prayer. You, you know, if you play back there and she comes up, her eyes are just going to light up. Nobody's going to get her in that situation. That's an infield hit. Watch the crossover. There's the perfect bunt. She sees it. She steps right down there. Boom, gone. But, uh, you know, very nice play by the third baseman, but you're talking about a, a perfect executed bunt uh, to get there. We've worked really hard on this in Casey. That's called the nine-step rule. You've got to be able to get there in nine steps or less or we make you a right-hand batter. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's that leadoff hitter on base again. And going down, popped up. Butcher was definitely on the move on the run attempt by Corey Shover. It's fouled away. Likely to see a, a possible bunt and run situation here. I think this situation where when you're ahead two to nothing, you can afford to do some things. And, um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised also, too, if you were, were to see a couple of hits occur that uh, you might see something, um, you know, relief pitcher, a little bit of everything. Look at the cameraman up there now. Well, it was dangerous. He just got hit with the ball. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and there's that bunt. And hit, it was on, 0-2. Oh now we might have a little different strategy. Of course, if you bunt on the third strike, you're out in Southpaw. I don't think we'll see that. <laughs> um, uh, I think we might see the slap and uh, we might see a run. Um, you can do a lot more things when you're ahead two to nothing than you can when you're behind or even. We have one out. Number two batter, Corey Shover, who was on and scored in the first. And she's lively right here. Count. Two strikes on her. And again, she swung away, but fouled it out. Runner at first is the speedster, Leon Butcher. Something on the ground here uh, for Casey Westfield would be difficult to double them up, but uh, also with speed on first, it forces you to hold your position a little longer than normal. Corey Shover's not exactly slow at the plate no. either. Fouled away again. Almost in the dugout, just out of play. Fans get their chance to participate. Great fans here at Middle Springs. Everybody, this is just a softball mecca. People are so used to softball, and they're very knowledgeable and yes. educated fans down in this area. Great crowd all the way around. It's been packed every game. Great crowds. Fouled away oh. again. Oh, Dave didn't quite get that one. No, I should have dove for that ball. <laughs> we'll have to talk to him about that later. <laughs> well, it's, uh, <laughs> And his daughter at bat, but uh, he's trying to say get on top of this ball a little bit more. But th this is a great matchup here. You know, she's actually just trying to hit a ground ball yeah. somewhere. It's a and, battle. And uh, Karen Marie's trying to throw a rise ball by her here about any second. So uh, this is a, it's a great matchup. 0 oh and 2. And finally, between the white lines, and Krista Diulio settles under it for the out. There are two outs, runner on first, and that's going to bring up Aaron Montgomery, the tough-hitting catcher. Situation here where defensively with two outs, uh, you obviously don't want to let that runner score from first base, and you'll notice the Alleman kids back up 
um, you know, obviously to catch the fly ball, but also to keep the ball that goes in the gap and uh, not allow Butcher to score from first base. Which, unfortunately for Alleman, she can on a single. Goes she uh, can get there in a oh. hurry. Outfield straight away. Infield, as we mentioned, are deep. In third and first out deeper than usual because they want to make sure they protect and making sure that nothing goes down the lines. Gets her on a swinging strike and evens the count at one and one. There are two outs. Nice rise ball right there, and that was power versus power. It goes back to that little uh, physics lesson I was giving you there a little bit ago. At 60 miles an hour from 40 oh. feet, that's .43 seconds the ball gets to the plate. So you don't have a whole lot of time. Less than half a second to make a decision. Right. Ooh, hitter. It's going to be a dead ball. Was that it a? It might have been a foul ball. I'll have to see, but I think it was a painful one if it was. We might want to get a look at this one, see if it got the bat or the elbow. It's hard to tell. It's either right on the, it hurt, it hit her, whether it hit the bat first and then her, I'm not sure. But nevertheless, it's going to be called a foul because she's still at the plate. That's a tough call. And, you know, um, there doesn't seem to be much argument here. Uh, you practically have to hit uh, Montgomery with an anvil or something here. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know what it would take to get her <laughs> out of the game, but uh, she'll step right back in here and be ready to swing. But, we, you know, she's, she turned in towards, um, you know, the ball. The ball got in on her, and, uh, you know, that happens sometimes. Sure. Foul off the bat and hit yourself. It's part of the game. Mm -hmm. Catchers are tough. We love them. Tries to change right back to Pena. Grabs it. And that is out number three. So they get out of it without any more damage. And the lead stands at two to nothing with Alleman coming to bat in the bottom of the third. Well, fine. And Katie Gano gets her chance at the plate. A junior left fielder batting number nine facing Fisher. This is Katie Gano, is that correct? Um, Gano, I believe. Is, okay. I noticed that she had 22 stolen bases on the year, a school record 100 stolen bases for Alleman. So uh, we're looking at speed, and I'm sure uh, Jay's thinking about just find some way to get on here, you know, down here in the, in the bottom of the order so we can make some things happen before we get back up here at the top. Uh, baseball people are used to seeing the number nine hitter not necessarily being a good hitter or not oh. fleet of foot, but in softball, different mentality. We want, we want a good contact hitter in the nine spot. We'd like to have somebody with speed, uh, hopefully get on in front of your leadoff batter, make some things happen. A lot of people call it the second leadoff or the other leadoff almost. <laughs> but right now, he's going to be set down on strikes by Fisher, who had a nice pitch. You'll see a nice rise ball coming at you right here. Watch, watch her get under this ball, get through the hips, up, snap it right where you want it, up and in with the rise ball. Nice pitch. It looked so easy. It was there, and then all of a sudden it's gone. And like you said, 0.43 seconds besides, <laughs> way too short you of gotta time. you got to be able to read spin in that period of time. And uh, if you can't read spin at this level, uh, you're going to have a hard time hitting the ball. And that brings up Mindy Smith, the leadoff senior shortstop. Three strikeouts for Laura Fisher so far in this ball game. Just a little bit inside. And once again, a lot of speed up here in the order. Um, one thing about Alleman that you had mentioned, as I've said before, they've seen a lot of good competition throughout the year. You know, they had a 15-inning win over Rock Island. There's a pitch she watched real close. I know they won a game 15 innings over Rock Island. I know they lost to Rock Island three times, two losses to Moline, one loss to Macomb. So, I mean, they, they've played a tough schedule all the way through, and it always makes them so much better when they get here. The record doesn't ever look as stellar, but those are double-A right. teams oh. that they're playing, oh. and it's great competition in preparation for the state tournaments. Mindy Smith goes down to first on a walk issued by Laura Fisher. I know in the past I've never looked at their record, uh, you know, because I know if they get here, they're going to be good, oh. and they've played great competition. Well, and the batting averages don't look quite as good either, but that's part of the competition that they're playing. Going quickly down to second off oh. the glove of Roberts. And that's probably going to be scored a hit. We'll wait and see what the official score is. But nevertheless, there are definitely two runners and only one out for the Pioneers. Little hit and run there looked like. Uh, she was going on the pitch. Uh, ball hit real well. She just tried to put it in play in the ground somewhere, just like you're supposed to, while you've been taught. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure how they scored that one yet either. I imagine they probably gave a hit on that. If they gave an error, it's a tough one. And that brings up second baseman Carly Burt. And she'd dearly love to move some people around. The three batter in the lineup coming up right now. And this young lady's a very, very good hitter. Runners at first and second. Coach Shover out on the field asking uh, some type of question to the umpire here. He's asking him. I know what he's asking is uh, something to do with trips to the mound. So he was talking about, you know, 
make sure this is his first trip to the mound. Uh, he might even be checking on an injury. That's always a good way to get out there without <laughs> without one being called. I'm checking on an injury, but uh, you know it, it's time to to have a little discussion here and see what they wish to do. Which way did we go? We're trying to figure hit or error on this last uh, at bat. Pitching coach or a, a hitting Looks coach? Like Which one? Calling it error. That's <laughs> a tough, tough play. <laughs> no, the one at third. Okay, that was scored as an infield hit for Krista Diulio, and that brings up, you see, Carly Burt, Laura Fisher, jumping up and down. She is ready to pitch. Runners at first and second, a tough decision to make here from the coaching standpoint. Uh, you know, you got one of your best hitters up here. Do you bunt, move them over, put the tying run at second for your four batter, or do you let her swing away? Infield's in, and so is the outfield. And oh, the answer ripped, that quick. And it is fair and tailing down. It goes right back. And we may have a tie ball game. They're going to send her. Jay Hatch is uh, holding her up at third. Oh. But one run scored, and it's probably a good thing. I, I tell you, that was a tough decision. Well, well hit, and it hit eyes. But quickly fielded by Neely Hupp, the freshman. That's where speed becomes so important in the outfield. You have to have people with speed. And you'll see that she's right on this ball. That's a rise ball up, head right on it. Ball goes down the line. Now watch Hupp get to this ball and then watch the throw to the cut. This is the key to pick it up, see the hands up, the cut, and there she comes into second. We don't actually see the relay throw. We see it running, run scores, but it's that trail runner, and now hit. Now there's and two runners pop out coming. So out on second is Carly Burt with the double, and on third, Krista DiUlio, and brings up cleanup hitter Jen Dubajunk. This young lady's been right oh. on the ball throughout the tournament. Uh, great hitter. Once again, runners in second, third, one out. You're trying to get even right now. You're not too worried about getting ahead. You're trying to get even. Infield in, trying to prevent the tying run. And boy, she's getting nothing great to hit. And what a good eye she's showing up there at the she plate. She had a great eye. Laura looks a little rattled out there. Um, you know, she hasn't given up many runs. Let's see what she comes back with here. Count 2-0. You know, she's looking for a pitch to drive right here. Tell you what, the infield is so far in. If she gets anything, oh, fouls it back. Good pitch. They are really tied, aren't oh, they? Oh, boy, they are way in. And, uh, you know, this is where, once again, this is called situational hitting. One out, you got runners at second and third. Your job is to get that girl in at third, either a long fly ball, ground ball through the infield, to something to get that tying run in. You got a good contact hitter up with power. <laughs> Foul it away the other way. I tell you what, she is bouncing it all over the place, and, and the count is even at two and two. Whatever she does, for sure, she does not want to hit a fly ball unless it's deep. She wants it to be deep. Uh, you know, a situation here where you don't want it down the pipe, but uh, I would probably think rise ball or a curve ball coming from Laura Fisher right here and hoping that she tries to pull an outside pitch. There Ground ball to third, looks back the runner, holds it a long time, and I tell you what, it is close at first, but she's punched out. Situation there where the Ooh. runner at third base goes back to the base too early. If she stays out there for just another second and plays with it for just a minute, that gives her one more step. Now you got the bases loaded one out. So it's little things like that to make all the difference, you know, in a state championship game. But uh, you know, we'll see what happens right here. You may be able to overcome that. But I know we've worked hours and hours on that little play right there with the runner, making sure she stays out there until she knows she isn't going to be tagged out. So often they want to go back too soon. She waited a long time to make that throw, but made mm -hmm. it very, very well. Well coached and well executed. That brings up Katie DiLeo, the junior catcher, who fouled so many off to the left side last time up the bat. Had a great at bat, mm -hmm. just wasn't able to put it in fair territory. Once again, she number trade it for now. Right, number five batter. Big hole in right center field. And a strike. She pulled everything her last at bat. She'll try to stay away from her. And of course, the hitter's looking for something in her zone, something she can drive. Fielders are a little bit deeper in the infield and also in the outfield. And now the field is pretty well straight away. And goes down. Great play. Left side. Picked up by Roberts for the out. But they did score one run and were threatening. But Fisher gets out of the jam again. So good comeback. But it's now 2-1 to one in this championship game. And we'll be back. As you look at the great crowd here in Middle Springs Park, I want to remind you that the broadcast rights for the Illinois High School Association Class A Softball Championship has been granted to Fox Sports Net and Intersport Television by the IHSA. Any unauthorized reproduction or rebroadcast of this event is prohibited. 
Well, you look back on that last half inning, uh, it's a great thing for hindsight there. And Coach Hatch saying, boy, I wish I'd have sent her from third base. But I've been down there many times in that situation. That's a tough call to make. You got uh, four or five batters coming up and uh, two really nice plays by Tracy Roberts for Casey Westfield to keep those people where they were. Well, she did. She played them well. And the first base by Pena to Melissa Hickox, the senior first baseman. Grounded out in the first. A tall batter. She's an outstanding player. She'll be going to Lakeland College to play volleyball uh, next fall. She's an outstanding volleyball player. And obviously an outstanding athlete. One of the featured players here in today's game. Most people will recall if they were here last year as they were walking out to the parking lot when we were down 3-0. She's the one that hit the triple to tie the game up in the seventh force. I do remember it well. You could not have written a script, Denny, for that <laughs> game if you had tried. It uh, was like a Cinderella story for you. It Hooray. sure was. Kind of like you and Michael Jordan went out on the most incredible notes that you could. <laughs> it, it was a great way to go. <laughs> we, we're, we've relived that one a lot already. It was, uh, it was a great experience, and uh, these guys are having an experience of their life tonight. It's, it's a great opportunity to get here. Two gate teams playing great softball, and Pena still on the mound. Oh, nice pitch to Hickox, swinging the strike, two and two. She's got good pop on the ball, and she gets that rise ball up, and uh, you know she throws it really well. You'll see it again here. There's the nice little rock, brings it back, gets under it, gets through those hips, rise ball right up where you want it. Outstanding pitch. No outs, top half of the fourth inning, a lot of action here. Most of the games in this tournament have been shutouts. There have only been two runs, uh, two games in which more than one team had scored until now. So We've probably seen more action in this game so far than probably any other game that I've seen. Actually, you're right. It's very unusual, but this is the quality of the teams. These kids manufacture things. They're not scared of anybody. That ball hit hard at and pulled up nicely. Mindy Smith on the great play makes sure on the throw, but what a great experience. Young lady, the senior, grabs the liner, pulls it up, says, I got it. That was a nice catch. If we, uh, you know, that was one of those. It's a, it's a skimmer. You're almost caught in between. We'll see this here. Once again, real nice pitch. Gets on top of it, and right Adders comes in, makes the catch. And the best thing is she sells it. Oh yeah. She sells it. You know, you teach kids that. Show it. You know, bring it up there and show see, it. But I she, got it. No, right. She no. sold the catch. It was a great one. And Katie Hanselman batting now in place of uh, Laura Fisher. She's the DH. Sophomore once again uh, here last year with uh, with our kids, uh, experience for it, and tonight out there on the field uh, making a contribution. Katie fouled out to the third baseman her first trip, and one way out draws the high pitch and evens it two and zero. Oh. This is a great night for softball, isn't oh. it? Winds blowing very little of all. What's flag blowing straight down out there? No wind. <laughs> straight down. <laughs> I knew you'd get that. <laughs> It's a pitcher's mentality. Oh They're always turning, God. looking at the flag. We always want to see where it's going. But, uh, I have, having been a catcher, I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true either because we had to take care of you guys. That's you right. need a lot of taking care. <laughs> and nice pitch by Pena. Two and two goes the count. It's always uh, been a great opportunity of pitchers working with pitchers. I think it helps so much uh, to have been there, have done that, and to, to have the same maybe wavelength that we can get to the pitchers with. Uh, it really is difficult teaching pitching. You got to really start when you're young to really get the fundamentals down. That count is full, three and two. Well, it's uh, it's great to see a lot of them. I think last year I saw right at 1,000 uh, different pitchers throughout the course of the year, and uh, we'll start in next week with camps and have about 250. So it, uh, you see everything imaginable, but it's a great experience for kids. And that ball up the middle has eyes, and it's going to fall in for a base hit. So Hanselman on with one out. She arrives at first base safely and is going to bring up Casey Shover, the second baseman. She fought that ball right off her hands. It was really a good pitch. She, she brought it in on her real well, and that's just a strong young lady right there making that hit. But, uh, you know, it wasn't a bad pitch at all. It got in on the hands, and she just muscled it into the outfield. With the runner on first, Casey Shover, who lined out to the right fielder last time at bat. And on the move at second, holding up now for the fly ball deep to Umbrella, who squeezes it for the out and brings it in to shortstop. So there are two outs on the fly ball in the center, and that's going to bring up Amy Sinclair, the right fielder. Struck out her last time at bat. Looking to make contact this time. You know, we see so many of these kids in the summer. Sometimes they, they wear different uniforms, play for different teams, but uh, 
uh, faces are familiar to me, and I, you know, I really enjoyed getting to talk to the three kids uh, from Alleman over there for a little bit in a non-competitive world. You know, let us know we <laughs> we're all human. You know, we get out here and it's so competitive. But I enjoyed really enjoyed talking to the kids. Oh, they're great kids. Everyone here. It's just been so nice, so polite. So that ball goes high and going to advance the runner on the wild pitch by Pena. Alleman's kind of gotten a tradition going down here. Speaking of things other than softball, they have their graduation out here for the kids because they always seem to miss it. Uh -huh. back home so here in the grass right. great place to graduate <laughs> huh <laughs> well it's certainly worth it i think but that is tough for kids you only graduate yeah. once in high school and traditionally it falls for them on the really? same weekend that is tough we've had situations where prom has been the same night and kids and boyfriends oh. are standing in the wings waiting to grab kids and it's tough for kids to balance all the activities of a high school life, and, and credit is due to all the, the parents who help them make good choices. And so difficult to get into that discussion. We oh. just had it at dinner today with some people of how you, how you can play three sports anymore. It's so hard with every, all the demands on a young player. And then school as well, increased credits and right. requirements for the university. So these kids have a lot on their plate. Kenya <laughs> goes high with that ball, 3-0. and oh. The very first time I believe she's been in that count in this game, or at least certainly since the early first inning. The runner on second, two outs. Little instruction from her dad coming out of the dugout right there on that one. I've been in that situation a few times before. You know, a little family discussion there, but uh, we'll see where she comes here on 3 0. Right down, first strike. Yeah, the father daughter connection where you know, you've coached your own daughter, mm -hmm. and of course Dave is doing that mm -hmm. now. Is it harder or easier? Love it. You know, yeah. Uh, Try to treat them as much as you can the same, but I don't think there's any separating. But I, I said last year, if you ever have a chance to coach your own child, do it. I, I think it's a great experience. <laughs> Tries to duck out of the way, but a called strike. <laughs> was it duck out of the way or duck under that I one? I don't uh, know. But, uh, that, was, uh, that was a pretty good 3-1 pitch right there. I She's think got so her too. Fault. <laughs> right. I think she was hoping that she'd get away with that <laughs> one. Not a chance. <laughs> this is uh, speaking of three sport athletes, Amy Sinclair, volleyball player, basketball player, softball player at Casey Westfield. And uh, I'd say not a whole lot of those anymore, but uh, it's a great commitment to be able to do that. We really treasure those three sport athletes because they bring leadership and they also bring something from the last sport they've been in. That ball high hit. Space hit. And it's going to bring in a run, at least a chance at one. The fly ball out throws Umbrella and that ball gets by Julio and going on to third. And safely in there, and again, Casey Westville running the base pass with a bandit. Well, you know, that, that really surprises me in that situation there. Missed cutoff, uh, nobody backing up the plate. Uh, you know, probably should have been at first base. Uh, you know, you don't have a shot at throwing her out at the plate, so you cut it off and keep Sinclair from going to second. And you'll, you'll see the throw here. Ball comes in, you don't have a play at the plate. Ball's too high right there, cut, and you'll see nobody's backing up the plate. Both people standing out here, so, you know, probably cost a base. And now a situation where you have another run at third base. The score is now three to one. And Tracy Roberts, the batter. That was a big hit for Casey Westfield because, you know, Alleman had just got a run with some momentum going. They like to get out of the inning, come back in and bat again, and now they've got that run back. Nice stop by Julio. That's a tough error when to the catcher in that situation because theoretically she wouldn't have moved up if somebody had been backing up the play. So see, as an old catcher there, you don't want that error, do you? No, no. you don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, it, it's so tough, and, and yeah. you're trying to see what's going to happen out in front uh. of you, and everybody's watching to make sure no one advances one. You guys with Casey Westwood always running. You just can't keep track of you. Just run, just run, run. That's what we tell. <laughs> uh, yeah, make them make a play. I think that's the key to high school softball. You must make the opposition make a play. And the other thing is that we teach them a phrase we use all the time is anticipate a negative. Always think they're going to do something wrong. So many kids think they're going to make a good play and they slow down. Our kids always think they're going to make a negative. Never so heard it. That's very interesting. And and low there's another run right here. there. Yep. Uh, that's a tough one. But there's a situation where she doesn't score on that play if she doesn't go to third. And theoretically, she should be at second right now if we make the you know, if the cut is made and you're there. But those are just little things that occur. You'll see the ball get away. It's low, down, tries to block it, hits the shin guard, bounces away. Hustle for it, but the speed on third was just way too much. And of course, Pena has difficulty moving in. Well, she threw that ball hard. Yeah. 
coming out of that. A little upset with, uh, you know, some pitches that just haven't gone the way, you know, you'd like for them to go and a little frustration, you know, which is, which is very common. He's and now you just have to fight your way through that. Absolutely, and she has fought so long. She's such an outstanding player. Pena with a nice Great change. change. Oh, good job coming back and gets Tracy Roberts on the change for the strikeout, but not before there were two runs. So it's now four to one with Alleman coming to bat. You got to get in the technology age on the web at www.ihsa.org. You can find all the complete coverage and up-to-date info on your favorite Illinois high school team or athlete. So log on at the website www.ihsa.org. I can tell you for sure it is a great site, maintained beautifully, and absolutely one of the stellar things the IHSA does, along with so many other things. It is a bar that's being set for the nation at that website as flying out to center field for the first out of the inning. You know, that ball was hit well right there and just happened to be right at Leanne Butcher. And when you hit a ball to her, it, it better go a long ways away because <laughs> I've seen her track down some fly balls that, um, you know, probably would be hits in most situations. I, I think we're starting to get to the fourth and fifth innings being really key here for Alleman to see if they can get something rolling and get back in the game here. They are the home team. What's your feeling, Denny, on being home? Or would you rather get at them and, and lead off, or would you rather be the home team? I'd rather be the home team every, every chance I can. I've often said sometimes, uh, you know, you'd like to bat first just because of the nerves thing. But, you know, having really the guts to do that <laughs> is a different story. But every time I've uh, ever won the toss up here, I've taken home team. I want last at bats at all possible. But I tell you, that first inning, uh, sometimes if you get to bat in the top of the first, as I've told my kids, I would like tonight. A uh, chance to get on them early and see what happens. So, you know, a lot of runs scored early. So pretty much whatever the coin toss is, you convinced the kids that was a better choice. Yeah, it's the same as the win. That's how uh -huh. I handle it. Oh, oh, great try by left fielder Neely Huck. Almost grabs it all the way in on the infield dirt, but it will be an infield hit for Hutchinson. And Jana Hutchinson reaches on the hit. We'll see this. Hup makes a great effort at this ball. Look how far she comes from left field. And I know she's really, she'll be disappointed that she didn't make that catch. But uh, she was coming after. But here could be a little rally. Something started here for Alleman. They won't go away, I guarantee you. Um, you know, the 233 uh, team batting average I said earlier today was very deceiving with the level of competition they played. But their opponents only hit 135. But there's a pop-up that just gives you nightmares. Rose Umbrello with the pop-up between second and the Shovers, and uh, it's uh, Casey, I believe, that squeezed it for the out. Yeah, they're probably talking about that at home. Who's going to take this one here some days? But, uh, you know, that once again, left-hand batter, and what's the pitcher throwing? Rise ball in that situation. Laura Fisher knows to throw left-hand batter's rise ball up and in, and, uh, you know, hope they hit the pop-ups, what she's looking for. That brings up Katie Gano. Fouls it back. Runner was going at first. And the person of Jana Hutchinson. Trying to get a little movement on the bases there. Once again, you're at the nine batter, but you probably want to try to get something out of her. So it, at worst, you got your leadoff batter coming up to start the fifth. But uh, we'll see what happens here. Takes the bunt, slaps, Five. fouls it out. Hutchinson with good speed at first. Trying to put the ball in play somewhere here. Trying to make something happen. This is the same situation they were in last inning when they hit the ball off Robert's glove at third base and uh, got a little rally going with that. So. You know, just trying to uh, slap the ball through somewhere. And they did it with two outs, so yes. they've been very active with two outs. <laughs> On the outside, makes the move, but doesn't go down at first. And the count's one and two. That was the spot where she wanted the ball away. I think you'll see probably they'll reverse the ladder here as we refer to that, and she'll probably come back with something up and in. And there it is. <laughs> for another strikeout. So Laura Fisher on the, I think there's some sort of osmosis going on with this coach right here, but they have retained the lead. It's four to one. We'll be back. There's a part of the great crowd that we've had this year at uh, the tournament and taking pictures. And as you see, there's somebody new on the mound. It's Jennifer Oaks, and Jennifer is a senior and an outstanding pitcher. She's had one of the wins here in this tournament, pitched the uh, earlier game today, and she's a fine pitcher. We've seen her for years. Uh, she's an outstanding pitcher, uh, hits spots real well, moves the ball around the plate, does an outstanding job there. 0.62 earned run average. Uh, I was looking through some of the statistics today, uh, going back through some information. Notice she's won 30 of her last 31 ball games. Uh, she's a winner. Uh, she knows what she's doing out there. Once again, another one of the kids we see in the summer a lot. Um, 
You know, and I, and I would like to see something about Karen Marie Pena after she's out of the game. You know, I, I, I would like to be down here and shake her hand and be one of the first ones because, you know, for kids, it's so easy to just say, I'm done sometimes. And she came back and, and gave a great effort here. You know, and you take just a couple of hits and a couple of plays away, you know, it's nothing to nothing or one to nothing game. She threw well. She all the praise in the world to her. Absolutely. And we should also mention that we this is not an unanticipated. It probably has nothing to do with the injury. Right. It probably has nothing to do with the, the pitching or the score or anything. This was a planned thing by Jay Hatch. He told us before that he'd probably pitch both pitchers. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised at all he's done that. I did that a couple years ago when we played each other here. And, uh, I, you know, this was something that uh, he was prepared to do. You notice help come in even as a freshman. She's right on that first pitch. You know, when a new pitcher comes in, you want to get on the first pitch if you can. Be aggressive. Ball's high, evens the count at one and one. Again, this is Neely Hupp, the freshman, who flied out to the first baseman her first time up. Good speed. You saw her almost make the great catch out there in left and coming in on the infield. She'll be disappointed that she didn't make that one, but it would be quickly assuaged if she were able to get on base. Right. New pitcher always uh, a little bit different story this time around. You got to get used to that. Ball tailing foul just uh, to the left side of the left field line and coming in to grab it's Katie Gano. If you look where she's at when the ball hits, when it's hit there, she's already beyond first base. You know, we, we don't ever think about coming back. And that's once again anticipate the negative. Who knows what might happen if that ball hits fair? We're going to assume triple immediately. We're assuming she's going to miss it. You can always go back, but too many of kids assume that they're going to make the play so they don't go real hard. Our kids always assume the negative. Therefore, we're going hard on everything. And that's something that you know, you'll see a lot in this tournament. Good don't players. see that a lot in the Major League Baseball. We see those ground <laughs> outs and they're always jogging down to first. So right. maybe we should try that philosophy. One and two the count. That ball's popped up. Going back is Oaks and coming in Oof. for a nice catch is Carly Burke. Good communication by Allman. Very good change up. And this, you know, first one she threw and she threw it for a strike. It's a nice pitch in that situation. Casey Westfield back to the top of the order with Butcher. Look for something on the ground. Of course, now we've got Oaks, who's uh, certainly the better fielder right now simply because of mobility. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to believe when you have a really good bunter that you may be too deep on the corners because <laughs> you think you're right on top of them, but you never know with some of these kids. Well, as fast as Butcher is, it's a long way for the second baseman to get over there. It, it, you know, it just and we've talked a lot about this, how much pressure a left-hand batter puts on your infield. If they'll just hit it on the ground. Because I've always said, I've never seen a pop-up take a bad hop. You know? <laughs> so so we don't. why would you want to pop the ball up? Hit it on the ground, hope it hits a rock or something. <laughs> so we, we, you know, try to beat the ball in the ground from the left side. Want to know the count? Butcher tries, makes a move, but pulls it back in time. 2-0, oh, goes ahead of Oaks. If you're looking for a pitch somewhere here, offensively you would be looking for a pitch on the inside corner, something that you can get down. Once again, you're behind 2-0 oh in the count and behind 4-1. You, obviously you don't want to put this runner on base with her kind of speed. First and third are really quite deep for this kind of a speedster. He bunts it, hits the plate, which is fair, and waits to go. Nice play by Delio. Made sure it went foul and then grabbed it real quick. Notice the back spin on that uh -huh. ball coming out there. That's another situation. I know that Dave spent hours and hours and hours on making sure these left-handers can make that ball spin backwards when it hits. You know, it's, uh, he may be more of a perfectionist than I when it comes to offense. Uh, he certainly is. He is not satisfied with a perfect bunt unless it spins backwards. So we're going to make that ball hit and spin backwards. I've seen him spin hours on that little drill right there. We got great shots from some of our great camera crew out here, and you could really see them look the ball right into that bat. There was no taking the eye off the ball with these kids. Well, Dave is the hitting instructor, and he has spent zillions of hours with these kids. He is few uh, in our area, I mean, by far the most noted hitting instructor. And, um, you know, a lot like I've done with pitchers, I mean, we're willing to work with anybody. We have a lot of out-of-town kids that come in for instruction. You just want everybody to get better, whether it be your team or anyone else. You want better players. Well, after watching 25 years of softball here, it's clear that your product has improved immensely. Well, it's it's just practice, you know. I, I think that's important, but it's uh, it's uh, paying attention to fundamentals. That's the key. You know, we, we call it attention to detail. We don't let anything go by that that isn't done right. So, you know, I think if you pay attention to detail, you can do it with small groups of kids. That's what we've been able to work at. Full count, one out. Top half of the fifth inning, Class A championship game, and it's four to one, Casey Westfield. <laughs> Foul back. 
Well, those 100 games or so you play in the summer don't hurt either. Certainly doesn't hurt. And those, uh, I think the kids charted like uh, 25 or 2,600 swings apiece in the winter. And that doesn't hurt either. Um, you know, a lot of our kids chart swings that they take in the winter. We have a, a building where they're capable of getting swings whenever they want. Um, and they go in and get swings, they chart. And most of our kids average 2,000 to 2,500 swings in the winter. That includes the basketball players. <laughs> so oh, that's, my gosh. That's called dedication commitment. We chart everything. You know, I think that goes back to what you said. The goal for your kids is to be in the state championship game. The goal for many kids is to get to state oh, or I win a right. regional. And I really think that raising the bar and that focus was really a great point about what part of what makes these two programs so successful. Well, you have to have goals, and, and you have to have goals that, that not only are attainable but uh, possible. And, you know, we, we think this is possible. Some kids, you know, they're, they're a little afraid of trying to go that far with their goals. Just reach out there a little bit farther and, and, and work yourself as hard as you can, and, and you'll be satisfied with whatever happens. It's such a fine line between knowing what is reachable and making sure there's a feeling of success and then and making the bar just a little bit higher the next time. But having come before has got to help knowing you can do it again. Yes, yes. And, and I mean, our, uh, our kids start with that approach. And any Alleman kids are the same way. You know, you can always tell that. Uh, they're not satisfied just to get here. You know, they, they want to do more and more each time. You know, they're, they're both of these teams are going to go after this game right down to the last out. They're not going to back off. Well, I think we're talking about any high school athlete. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to b believe that you can do it. You have to work hard to make it happen. You have to set goals. And it's not enough to set the goals, but to talk about what will I do to make these goals happen. That's right. If, I mean, if you're not goal oriented, you're never going to accomplish anything. You know, every successful person is goal oriented and, and they're never satisfied with where they're at. Um, you know, I watched Dave go through a, a three hour practice the other day. And I mean, it was as intense as anything that I've ever seen or done. And that, I couldn't see hardly any mistakes. And they were just, they were at it for three hours. And you know, that's just the, what it takes. And talk about stick to -itiveness. Butcher's been up here for, it seems like a year. <laughs> Still three and two. She and Oaks are going at it. Now, oh, and Oaks gets it, but that, there's that expected negative. And I tell you what, with her speed, that was nearly a base runner. It was one of those situations. That was a great pitch, by the way. You know, a 3-2 count and to throw that change up. And I thought the catcher did an outstanding job keeping that ball in front of her and uh, having, keeping composure. You'll see the stop right there. Goes off her glove. She goes out and gets it, makes the throw, dive to first, and had her. And a real nice pickup by the first baseman. It was very nice. And, you know, it, had she not been disappointed that she struck out, I think she would have actually beaten that one out. Dave probably be reminding her of that sometime. That I little tap of the bat on the ground there might cost her It'll base. It'll probably come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ooh. Won't phase her. Corey took one there on the shoulder. And, boy, aren't you glad that wasn't you. Yeah, but it, uh, I can tell you it won't phase her in the least. She'll turn into this ball. Turn. Oh, right there. Yeah. It's exactly how you taught. You turn away from the ball and you take it off the shoulder so you don't get hurt. But, uh, you know, it's a situation there where a pitch on the inside. And uh, once again, this goes back to um, we, we've probably tossed that ball hundreds of times to kids with a wiffle ball and have them turn away from the ball so that if you do get hit, it's a glancing blow off the shoulder. Our kids have practiced that play right there hundreds of times. But uh, you want that's a safety play so that if you get hit, you don't open up and get hit in the face. You turn the shoulder away. No stone unturned. No. Two outs, runner looked like she was going with Montgomery up to bat, but she comes back. It's a great pitch. She's got the changeup going really well, and especially to a hitter with a lot of power like uh, Aaron Montgomery. It's a good pitch to throw. Good shot of Jennifer Oaks. What a personal young lady we were talking with her mm -hmm. before, before the game. Just so pleasant, so excited to be playing. And all these kids, are, it's really fun. And for seniors, it's strange. They've graduated from high school, and here they are still playing for their high school teams. Right, and, then, and they look forward to this. And they've worked hard all year to get here. It's, just, it's a great, I tell my kids, you know, a lot of times, you know, you get spoiled by it when you've been here a few times. And there's so many kids. Think of how many kids play high school softball never got here once in their whole career. So, you know, they, they need to be aware of that. Always try to make them aware of, of the opportunity they're having. Ball's outside. It's a good waste pitch. 0-2 count. Take her out of way somewhere. And then think like a pitcher here and see if this ball <laughs> see if this ball comes back in there somewhere but uh Aaron wouldn't wasn't be, biting no uh. wouldn't be surprised to see her take off on this pitch at first base and um see what happens here with a four to one lead in the fifth inning she does balls hit foul and so that good effort on the way to second will bring her right back 
but and you had called it on the nose. She was going. It's a good opportunity to, to do that. And, you know, once again, it goes back to having that three-run lead and being able to, you know, do things a little bit more of a gamble than you might if it's nothing to nothing or one to nothing. You've been right so much tonight, I, I'm almost looking for the walkie-talkie that's going <laughs> back and forth between you two. It's amazing. Montgomery with a one and two, two outs, top half of the fifth. Casey Westfield with a four to one lead over the Rock Island Alleman Pioneers. Going again, the throw down by Diulio. Grabbed quickly by shortstop Mindy Smith, but under the tag goes Corey Shover. So she's down at second in scoring position. That was the time to run. You'll see the uh, replay here. Ball away, balls up, and the release. Watch the slide away from the tag. See her read the front leg, read the leg of the defender, so you know which way to go. A lot of people think you just play this game. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned an awful lot just tonight. Gap shot. Oh, yeah. And, of course, it's Montgomery in the, in the gap. Run score. She's going for three. Throws in there, but behind her on the good side on her belly, and in with a triple, Erin Montgomery and an RBI. So Stolen Shover base. Shover created that run, and Montgomery just chased her around. You'll see the replay here. As Montgomery comes, notice she'll go head first. She's trying to get in front of the way of the ball. So the idea of there is to get in the path of the ball. Once she rounds second base and she sees the angle of where the ball's coming from, her job's to get in front of it, obstruct the view. That's why she went head first. Practice and execution. Brings up Melissa Hickox, the first baseman. Line to shortstop last time up. Ooh, inside pulled her off the plate. Of course, Aaron Montgomery has good speed on anything that gets away down there at third. Melissa Hickox in her own right, an outstanding pitcher, has had a tremendous year for Casey Westfield. All four pitchers in this game, tonight's possibility, they all have ERAs under one. Hickox has one RBI tonight. She'd love to get two fouled away. For the Lady Warriors, this is a big run at third base right here. When you look at five to one, you're thinking Grand Slam ties this game up. If you're looking at it from that point, but if you get that next run in and you're up six to one in the Grand Slam, you still got one run to play with. So you're always looking ahead. You never know. Oh, we do have a home run derby, a hitting derby <laughs> that's conducted between games. And we had the young lady who won it hit a couple out. There's another gap shot falling quickly in front of center fielder Umbrella, and that is going to score the run. So Hickok with her second RBI of the night. And as you so rightly remembered about last year, she certainly has been in this spot before. Yes, she has, and uh, she just took that outside pitch to right center field, and uh, you know, Dave's been wanting the bats to uh, open up here the whole tournament, and uh, you know, we're really, to be honest, in the sectional tournament, he would be the first to tell you, didn't really feel like the kids swung the bat very well in the regional or the sectional, and um, the pitching was, was outstanding, and uh, Laura has thrown well, as has Melissa, uh, and he was uh, hoping, you know, they'd start swinging the bats a little bit here, and boy, they, uh, they seem to be right on the ball tonight. Well, I know he's a little bit nervous about all the runs you scored in the, sem in the semifinal, like don't waste them. <laughs> well, you know, you never really know what's <laughs> going to, to occur in a ball game, and you never know how many runs you're going you're gonna to no. need uh, in this game. And, uh, you know, Alleman has a lot of at-bats left here, and they, they just need to get out of an inning. I think that's, that's the key thing for them to get out of this inning so they can get the bats back in their hand. And uh, for the Lady Warriors, obviously, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't let off because you never know what it's going to take. It's a state championship. I'll tell you what, I will never say never again. Alleman is just an outstanding team, outstanding program, outstanding, well coached. And last year, we thought for sure that uh, you were not going to win your sixth state championship. What were you guys saying up here, talking about us? Or? Well, no, but just that <laughs> it was like this, I mean, it was <laughs> such, you know, it yeah. just wasn't going to happen. And, mm -hmm. and things do occur that you don't expect. So that's why you play everything and every out and every ball. That's right. As long as you have an out left and as long as you're still out on the field and you've got bats in your hand, the game's still going on. So you, you never really know. You play it to the last out. Which is why, and that's a, a sign of respect for Alleman, the fact that you know that that number cool. six run is so crucial because you know they could are capable of doing anything gotcha. at any time. That is crucial. Ball's popped up. Julio is going to squeeze it for the out, and they get out of the inning, but not before two runs score. So they've been in pairs of twos. It is six to one. Casey Westfield coming to bat. The Allman Pioneers. 
Reminded that the Chicago Fire Soccer rages on Fox Sports Net. Tonight, the club travels to Miami to battle the Fusion. It's MLS Soccer, the Fire and Fusion, tonight at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. Well, we'll see if Laura Fisher comes out here with a little extra fire on the ball here, and we'll see if Alleman can make something happen with the left-hand batters up here. We love having leadoff hitter coming off in this right. crucial fifth inning, and we have something you don't have in baseball. We had the seventh inning stretch, take me out the ball game after four. A lot of fun for the fans, and that ball slapped right over the second baseman. Oh, great catch going back by the senior, Casey Shover. Once again, that's a rise ball to the left-hand slapper. It's a, it's a key of getting the ball up in the air, and then Casey makes a drop step to the ball and gets it um, like you're supposed to. But a lot of that starts with, with a pitch selection. And, and for us right here, either uh, Dave made that call from the dugout or Aaron Montgomery behind the plate uh, to call that rise ball so they don't get their hands on top of it. This is Krista DiUlio. She's a third baseman, she's a senior. And if you've heard that name before, that's Katie DiUlio, who's a junior catcher. They are cousins. That's, that's a lot of fun, isn't it, to have the family here? And I love that part, it's so much fun. And, and you know, in the family affair with coaches and daughters and, uh, you know, sometimes what I think one of the neatest things, and certainly you being in schools, is to have one of your players come back and coach with you. Right. Uh, that's such a treat that they want to return and that they're their familiarity and their remembrances are positive. Right. Up to bat is Julio, and that ball is high and outside, one and two. They're looking for some kind of rally, a little something to get them rolling. You know, the fans are trying to get a little fired up over there, but, you know, you got to be a little stunned at six to one, more than I would ever expect, but there's another pop-up. Headed out for Neely, but Corey Schover says, I've got it, and backs up on the infield to take the out. Two down. Now uh, you can just see a little bit more hop in the step out there defensively for the Lady Warriors uh, with those runs they picked up in the last inning. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens here. But I keep thinking back of when it was two to one and runners at second and third, from, um, how crucial that situation was. Well, Carly Burt's made a living out of being on base tonight. Got on a walk in the first, and she had a double in the sec on the third. So she's uh, certainly caused some difficulty for the Warriors. She has a real nice swing. She seems to be right on everything. It's a very compact, nice little short stride, short stroke with the bat. Foul the back. Compact swing. It's, uh, when you go around and watch so many teams play who don't see good pitching, you see such long, slow swings. But you can really tell the good hitters that have the short, compact swing. As, uh, you know, when it's coming in there at the speed that you're going to see in the state tournament, uh, you want the quick swing. And Jay Hatch was talking about getting to the tournament and going through a team from Rockridge. That ball popped up, and the pitcher, okay. Fisher, says she's going to take it, just get out of my way, and squeezes it for out number three. So Alleman goes down one, two, three in the bottom half of the fifth. So five complete, two to play in the championship game. You know, we talked a little bit about earlier, and about stiff competition. I know Alleman plays it a lot, but I can remember uh, Casey Westfield, uh, Gigi McIntosh, calling me in the middle of the season and saying, hey, Denny, we need a game. We need to play somebody. And she has an outstanding team at New Lenox Lincoln Way. And they came to Casey, drove four hours down for a doubleheader, and then turned around and drove back because we wanted to play really good competition. And I remember uh, splitting the doubleheader and talking to Dave afterwards. And, and he, he thought, you know, they were such an outstanding team that the loss wouldn't hurt us at all. Really thought it was important that we go find the best competition we can. And I, I think, you know, th those things help you during the course of the year. Well, you know, a lot of coaches like don't even like to be undefeated because you don't know how your team will play after a loss. And right. You need to find that out or how they play when they're down. You'd right. like to see what the kind of character you've got. I remember joking to him that day after they lost and trying to make some kind of joke. <laughs> if I get after they lost, I said, well, we've never won it undefeated. You know, you just kind of <laughs> you make that. And he said, well, that's what I just told him. Yeah, he talked about that. You know, so always looking ahead, having those goals of making something positive out of that negative that you just had. And of course, Gigi McIntosh, the uh, former coach here around this area, Morton, with fine, fine teams, has moved up to New Lenox Lincoln Way High School and working on a program up there. Does a great job. Out outstanding coach, and uh, we really look forward to playing him. It was a real nice doubleheader at Casey. I'm sure that was a huge win for uh, Gigi as well, to get a win out of Casey for her new team. Boy, I bet she touted that on the whole four-hour trip back. <laughs> Ground ball to third. Oh, nice throw by third base from Chris Giulio. Over to Dubajunk, and that retires Casey Chauvin. And brings up Amy Sinclair, who scored her last time up after singling. 
first out here in the sixth inning. This is kind of where you get to the point where you don't know if six is enough, but you kind of, as a pitcher, I know Laura Fisher's thinking, just get, let me get back out there. And, and after pitching, you know, all the years I did, 20, six to one, if you're in the championship game of the tournament, you just as soon get back out there and, and get those outs that you're looking for. But uh, we'll see what happens here. Oaks goes outside. Now that was a big hit last time by Amy Sinclair as a base hit up the middle. Got got him the run after it had gotten two to one and back in the ball game. Uh, Amy's uh, father, by the way, good friend of mine, Keith Sinclair, teaches right next to me in the classroom <laughs> beside me, and he's the head football coach at Casey Westfield. I see him here tonight. Few sports maybe talked over the dinner table at that home. <laughs> yeah, at home and in the hallways at school. <laughs> You know, the school where I'm at, we have an awful lot of Hersey High School in Arlington Heights. We have an awful lot of uh, parents who have their kids going to school there as well. And, it, and it, for the most part, it's really been positive mm -hmm. and, and really neat to see. Get to watch your kids every day grow. Foul back. Well, I think there's a lot of experiences that teachers get to get to do that, you know, that other people don't. And I've always said it's just a great experience to be around kids. Oh. And, uh, we have the best yeah. job in the world. It is. I, I, you know, I really haven't seen them change a whole lot. I, I doubt if you have either, you know, in 20 five years or seven years or whatever I've done at school, I, I still enjoy going. I know, teach and math. The I have to work on that part yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even remember how many years I've been there. It's been there so long. <laughs> as long as you keep enjoying what you're doing. Sinclair foul back. Good contact with the bat. And the count stays at two and two. There's one out. We're in the top half of the sixth inning. This Class A championship bout. You know, the funny thing, you look around the crowd right now, it's just pretty quiet. You know, where people have kind of settled in here after those three or four innings of, of real excitement and things happening, and all of a sudden it gets six to one, and you can just kind of see everybody sitting around here watching to see what's going to happen. Well, you know as soon as you say that, what's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> something exciting maybe. Nice change. Oh, good pick. Great change. Strike out by Jennifer Oaks. Great pitch, here she comes, motion remains the same. Nice little change out of the back <laughs> of the hand. That's called getting them on the front foot. The crew here is just the greatest, and I tell you, that is a great shot. And sometimes behind the scenes, you don't know all the technical things that go on and, and that uh, make things work, and we just really appreciate all the help that makes it good for kids, and we get to show you the best in IHSA. It's also a great teaching tool. As I've said before, you know, the, the shots that, that we get here in the state tournament, especially from center field, you can sit down with your team next year or this summer, show them the state championship game, and it really is valuable. I, I think tape is wonderful for teaching. Kids are so visual today. You know, yes. They're used to seeing everything in, in on the screen, and it's harder to talk to them unless they can see it. And they also kind of have a three minute. You know, Give me that three minutes of action and show it to me quickly. Tracy Roberts, another one of our three sport athletes at Casey Westfield, uh, played volleyball last fall on our very, very successful volleyball team, coached by Marianne Larimer, the athletic director at Casey Westfield, and uh, also very successful basketball season. The head coach of the basketball team at Casey Westfield, Mike Black, a familiar name here from Heather Black, uh, father of Heather Black, who pitched for us a uh, few times up here in the state a couple, tournament. So couple. As it goes, and uh, you know, I'm sure Alleman's same situation. You always uh, can relate something to someone else, it seems like. Well, Alleman's been in kind of a unique situation. They've actually been double A a couple of times, just yes. their size changes. And of course, the standards for population within the school change are set by the, the uh, state each year. And it depends on the number of schools and splitting. So yes. they're kind of in a tough situation because when they go double A, they're, they're very small, and mm -hmm. when they're single A, they're very big. That's a tough spot, and a lot of schools doing that quite often. It's hard as not to know what's going to happen. Right. Two and two here. Two outs. That ball down to Krista Diulio, who fires. She's got a great arm there at the hot corner, and she fires her out to Duba Junk for the out. So one, two, three goes down the Warriors. Six to one. Coming to bat, the Pioneers, bottom half of six. Due to the length of today's event, we now pick up the action later on in the proceedings. And we're back in the bottom half of the sixth. Ron reminded the IHSA championships continue on Fox Sports Net. Tomorrow, the girls' soccer title is on the line as the state's top two teams battle. Coverage starts immediately following the Cubs White Sox game in the IHSA girls' soccer championship tomorrow on Fox Sports Net. That, that, is that was fouled out and caught quickly by Melissa Hickox. Round number one. 
by Jen Duvajunk. Is that four or five pop-ups? I think the last batter, she just, it's just so hard to get anything started if you can't get it on the ground. You know, it's, they're not going to drop many pop-ups up here. Didn't take a bad hop. Nope. You won't see many of them take a bad hop. Right? So, you know, they, they need to get something going here. Allman needs to get uh, something on the ground, a line drive, a walk, uh, something to get a base runner and get a feel for getting back uh, with a little something going on here. I will say for all kids that want to be catchers, it would, they could really watch Erin Montgomery frame these pitches. And she really knows how to frame, and she knows where the gloves should be. She sells it to the ump. Very good at that. We've worked hours and hours and hours on that one of uh, knowing uh, where the webbing of the glove goes, whether it's inside or outside, based on the location of the ball. So you got to be able to frame the pitch and uh, drag the ball back in there. Well, somebody good to get things started is Katie Diulia, who's had some great at-bats. And there's one down, it got eyes. Oh, just going foul. She has been toying with that line all night long. She deserves yeah. one of golf fair. She does. I can feel for Coach Hatch down there on that one. Boy, you, you know, you struggle for a couple innings. You finally hit one hard, it goes foul by a foot. Um, been there before, done that, so to speak. You know, some, sometimes those things just happen. But, um, you know, they, they keep getting some good cuts. These, these kids will swing the bat. They, they always do. And... You know, like I've said before, we see so many of these kids in the summer, and, and I'm sure we will this summer, uh, but uh, Rock Island or somewhere in a, in, a, in a big tournament, summer tournament, we'll see these kids. So, you know, they've all been here before, and uh, they'll, they'll be swinging it. Every good pitch that comes. You know. I love the intensity in Katie's eyes. Oh, yeah. She's looking for a pitch to just anything, some, some kind of a rally, get something started. Tough pitch to hit, great pitch by Fisher. I can tell you right now, knowing Lawrence Fisher as well as I do, she she feels it right now. I think she's extremely confident in what she's doing. And, uh, you know, I know all pitchers work really hard, but I just can't imagine anybody putting in more time than she has since last spring. I, I, can, tip. I can personally attest to the days <laughs> <laughs> and hours that we have uh, put in together as far as the pitching part of it is concerned. But, uh, you know, and, and I know so many pitchers do that, but it's uh, it's great to see kids, uh, you know, become dedicated to something like that. A little fan enjoying the game. Huh? After 25 years, we're starting to see the daughters of former players, and uh, maybe we're seeing the future right there in the stands. That ball well hit, but popped up. And Corey Shover squeezes it for the out. So after the good liner down, left field line unfortunately got underneath of that one. Another pop-up. You know, she's throwing a rise ball so much, and um, she's just got it spinning pretty good, and it's just a little bit quick. And, uh, you know, obviously when you've got the rise ball going and you've got the right spin on the ball, even if they do hit it so often, it's a pop-up, and that's what you're looking for. Well, Coaching-wise, it's great if you're on the uh, pitching team. <laughs> right. Mary-Kate Lovery flied out to right and lined out to center. So she's made contact both times. Facing Fisher. For the third time tonight. Good pitch, good swing. Situate once again, a situation here where you know we're just trying to put something in play. But here comes the pitch, rise ball, up. And the key about that pitch there is it was in the strike zone. It wasn't something that's up in the eyes where people are going to take it. There's nice a strike. hit. And good fundamentals by Butcher. Look she got her body right behind the ball, looked it in, made sure it was not going through her legs. Stay back. Situation like that, single doesn't hurt you. You're looking at it right now saying, you know, it's going to take six or seven of those uh, to score some runs. Let's take a look at that cut. It's a real nice looking swing. Stance is good. A little short, quick stride, compact. Head right down on the ball. Face hit up the middle. So Lavery at first with two outs, bringing up Jana Hutchinson, the pinch hitter who bats in place of the pitcher. The DH, right? Yep. Apologies, yes, not a pinch hitter, the DH, the designated <laughs> hitter. There we go. We'll see what happens here. Single last time up to left center. Pop up. Pop up, trying to get it to go out of play, willing it there, squeezing it is Hickox, and she squeezes it for the out, the senior keeps anything from that single rallying and unfortunately kills it. And a fine look at the crowd here tonight in this beautiful night here in Central Illinois. And we have a new player entering the lineup. Number 25, Ashley Gray. 
I've got to say this is one of my favorite players because this is a young lady who has, has really committed to our team from freshman year on and, you know, not, hasn't got a lot of playing times. Great kid. Valedictorian, I believe, the senior oh. class is just an outstanding young lady, and I'm really glad to see her get a chance to bat here in the seventh inning. And, uh, you know, I think there's so much to be said for kids anymore. There are so many kids who, if they're not a starter, they don't want to be there, you know. I, I, I see that so much anymore. And I want to make sure you know, I, I, that key, kids get credit for being on the team. I think that's important that they do that. And like I say, you, you know, I just see so much anymore, you know, whether it be players or some, you know, parents or whatever. Well, you know, if my child isn't going to be a starter, do we want to put the time in? Boy, I, I'm, I love to see kids who don't get all the glory get a chance to maybe play in a state tournament like this. So for Ashley Gray, uh, you know, I, I'm glad to see her get a bat here in the seventh That inning. is really neat. Great kid. And academics and athletics do go hand in hand. Oh, good swing. Fouled it off, woke everybody up on the uh, camera. Now my third base. I believe a perfect <laughs> GPA. I'm still trying to figure out how to spell GPA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she could help you. Yeah, she, she's helped me many times before. Oh gosh. So much talent in our future as a kids. It really is wonderful. And a senior that's willing to be here to do the job. How many seniors do you say that, well, you know, if I'm not going to get a play, I don't want to be there. And she's been here all the way through for us. Well, you and I talked earlier, too, about that, you know, for so many kids, this is their social life, the friends that they make. Oh. This is who they hang out with. And, and to yes. cut a kid at that point is to, is to sever their actual emotional tie with high school in some cases. It's really tough being on either end of that. I talk so much to the kids about experience. Just, just, just mm -hmm. enjoy the experience. Enjoy every bit of it. Good pitch by Oaks. I love her attitude. She's smiling out there. Right. And, you know, it's well, these kids are playing. You know, obviously, you know the Alman kids are a little disappointed. I think they think they made a couple mistakes here or there. It cost them some runs. They had some opportunities. Didn't quite get a key hit when they probably needed it. A couple little things that, that you know make it a six to one game. It's certainly been a lot closer than six to one. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, I'm sure they're a little disappointed in that right now. But good cut, taking her swing. She's making this at bat count. One and two, the count. And we certainly don't want to take away from the bottom of the seventh. This game isn't over oh, yet no. by any means. They'll come up there swinging, but. But, you know, when you get to the state championship game, I talked to some parents this afternoon. I mean, uh, that, that's the ultimate. Uh, you, you know, t I mean, to win it is great. That's great. But to play in a state championship game where you're on television, you'll get to tape this thing and have it forever, <laughs> you know, and you can show your kids one of these days. I, I think it's just uh, a wonderful opportunity. Absolutely is. And anything that we can do to help kids enjoy the experience is absolutely the goal. Six to one, top half of the seventh inning, Class A championship game. Oh, good pitch. She looks at quickly, makes makes the move down. Well coached, obviously, and unable to make the play because of good heads up by Diulio. There's that real good change up again. And Oak, Oaks has thrown the ball really well. You'll see it here real nice. Arm motion stays good out of the back of the hand. Well, that's a wonderful change. <laughs> I couldn't hit that in a year. Right? That's, a, that's a great pitch. She's thrown really well. And that brings up. The leadoff hitter, the speedster, Leon Butcher, who certainly had a big part in tonight's game. You know, the other thing about this is uh, a lot of times college coaches are not able to be here to see the game, and how many of them will watch this game on tape? And, you know, they'll, they'll get this taped off TV, and they'll watch it. There will be kids that will get recruited just because they played in this game. And I think that's, you know, another point that people don't, don't think about. I'm sure we got college players out here right now that one of these days we'll, we'll see in a college program. Oh, absolutely, and you know, you, there's certainly with money situations being difficult, it's so expensive to go to college anymore. If there can be Gosh. help academic, like a kid like Ashley Gray, obviously is probably looking at some academic assistance oh, yes. as well. Yes. Uh, in fact, you know, the vast majority of our kids, uh, all of our seniors here are going to play beyond high school. And I know we had, we had signed 65 kids to softball scholarships prior to this year. All of our seniors are moving on. Um, Hickox will play volleyball. Um, you know, as I said earlier, and, and some softball, and a little bit of everything. Um, Ashley Gray is going to play tennis. Uh, so it's, uh, it's just great, and I'm sure if I knew the Alleman kids better, I could sit here and say the same thing about their kids. And it's just it's, a, it's wonderful for kids to have the opportunity to do that. Well, when you're a college coach and you get an opportunity to have a player from a winning program, they have a different attitude. They bring something yes. different to the, to the plate, and it's really nice. They look for that, too. You bet. Believe me. Believe me, they look for it. 
There's the bunt. Bunt, and there's that backspin. See the backspin? I sure did. <laughs> See, I'm coachable. You're learning now. You're learning. <laughs> I can tell you right now, Dave, if you can't make it spin back, you can't bunt. Uh, and that's uh, winter lessons right there. <laughs> <laughs> back there and learn how to make the ball spin backwards. Yeah, she's going to have to hit it this time. It's yep. two and two. <laughs> and this is a key, too, of taking left-handers and moving on up to the ability to drive the ball in the gap. You know, So it is a progression, especially in our program, of, of taking kids, first moving them to the left side, there's that changeup. I knew that was coming. <laughs> Great pitch. So two Great. strikeouts here in the top half of the seven for Oaks. You'll see it again, and you're not going to see anything different other than the fact this one was up a little bit, uh, probably higher than she wanted it. Right there. See it from the side angle. Just got her out in front. Got her out on the front foot. So she's, she's thrown really well. Oaks faces Corey Shover now. Hit by the pitch. We talked about uh, how she turned into it and well-schooled and how to avoid injury and get on. Fouls that one out of play. She's going to be an outstanding player. We've, we've watched Corey grow up at the softball diamond. And, um, you know, last year I stuck her in the lineup as a freshman late in the season to play third base when we had an injury to Lindsey Sanders, our third baseman at the time. And she really came on strong for us. And it's not every freshman that gets the opportunity to do that. But uh, we, we knew she'd have an outstanding year this year. One of the toughest things. Allman has the uh, Change. Great change. Great pitch, and nine seniors, and so they're looking at the ending of career one way or the other here mm -hmm. this evening, and just a tremendous, tremendous careers. You know, most of them have played on a state championship team because they did win it two years ago. Yes. Um, now we're looking at Casey Westfield with a shortstop, sophomore, pitcher, sophomore. If you're an opposing coach, you're not real happy about that, I don't think. Freshman in the outfield. Did she swing? Not sure, but there's going to be a play. Oh, nice tag and by tag. Duvajan. There's the senior experience making the great play off the throwdown by Katie Diulio on a very tough heads-up running play by Corey Shover. So three up, three down. Last at bats coming. Take a look at this. Don't mm -hmm. know what she did Ooh. swing. Oh, she's looking back to check. <laughs> <laughs> three outs to go. Oh. Is Fisher three outs away from her first state championship? Or will Alleman come back to tie? Look at the smile on that face. If that's not confidence, whew. She's uh, wired up for this one here. I mean, she wants the ball, wants to throw it. And I'll tell you what, I've heard, I'm having a hard time sitting here right now, I want to tell you. <laughs> this is uh, three outs away for uh, these kids. They got a little hop, a little bounce going on out there right now. Rose Umbrella, the batter, moves out of the way of that pitch. The one thing you tell them this is a coaching standpoint, you're batting, just get to the next hitter. You know, just get us a rally, get us something started, get to the next hitter, and that's what you're wanting to do. And Laura Fisher, you're telling her to maintain her composure. You know, Maybe calm a little overhyped here, three and oh. Probably, yeah, calm down a little bit. Now she's going to make her throw it right oh, sure. down the pipe. You're not going for that one. We Pro need a runner. Probably make her throw another one right here. I'd be, you know, I'm just have my batter right up on top of the plate here, doing anything you can, try to find a way on the base. Junior center fielder. That ball's low, and we have a leadoff base runner in the person Rose Umbrella, which will bring up Katie Gano. You just keep saying, let's get to the next hitter. You never know if you'll just you know, take some pitches, get up on top of the plate here, distract, anything you can do to try to get some balls. Defensively, you're not worrying about the runner whatsoever. You're looking for outs. I think we have a uh, pinch hitter coming up in the person of Michaela Morford. She's batting in place of Katie Gano. And the runner on first making everybody look. Michaela Morford is the pinch hitter. Michaela Morford. Situation here where she's you know, trying to put the ball in play, get that ground ball through the infield. Pitching standpoint, just throw strikes. Foul back. Michaela Sr. So nice to see seniors get a chance, like you said, to play in this game, and she is ready. On deck batter. Mindy Smith. A lot of encouragement. Make something happen. Get to me. Get to me. It, you can right. just say, get to me, I'm ready. Get to me. Just keep getting to the next hitter. That's what you're thinking defensively. Ball's high. You're hoping defensively that you're saying, hit it to me also. Hit it to me. You know, you want confidence out there. We always say that uh, Casey Westwood always said when the last out of the game comes, the words that always come out of my mouth is who wants it? And uh, you'll hear that 
Oh, where? She thought she had that oh, pitch she there. she did. Not quite. She thought she did. So we got a full count, no outs, runner on first, so the run will be going on this pitch. Of course, we're trying to avoid any line drive. Don't right. want a double play for sure. You're going to be very careful getting off the back here because you don't want to be line, line double play, take you out of, out of the game pretty quick. Fouled back. She had a good leg on it, but she was certainly keeping her eyes open to make sure she knew where it was at. Fastball strike right there. I just really would like to know what's going through Dave's mind down there right now, pacing around in this situation. I, uh, you know, I, I want to say, I say this right now, you know, so I know just because I've been around him so much, there's probably not anyone that would deserve this more than maybe these two guys here, you know, that have, Jay, who's done it for such a long time, and Dave, who took over this year. Fouled back. Hanging right in there. Uh, she's doing a great job. She is making Fisher work hard. As I said before, Dave's one of, one of the premier hitting instructors. And now I think he's just proven he's one of, he's one of the premier coaches. You know, I mean, he can really teach the game. And Either that or coaching play. doesn't matter. It's all the kids. Let them play. Yeah. Casey, <laughs> wins with, Casey Westfield wins with either of you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's probably right. Pop up. And there is Miss Shover squeezing one of the many fly balls she's caught today. So a good at bat by Michael Amorford, but unable to put it in. It didn't take a bad hop. Another fly ball off that rise ball pitching of Laura Fisher. And that brings up leadoff hitter Mindy Smith. Top of the order here. This is a situation where you're looking, you know, you don't need a gap shot here or anything. You just need another runner. You need somebody on base to get something rolling. Casey Westfield looking at two outs from a championship. But down, nice butt, unable to pick up. Great job by Mindy Smith. And Alleman rallies quickly to get two runners on with only one out here in the bottom of the seventh. That was a great bunt. Really came out of nice, came out of the box nice, kept the bat back, got it right where you want it. It was outstanding. Just keep trying to get to the next hitter. And scored as a hit, right. bringing up Krista Diulio. It's the toughest outs to get sometimes when you're out there and you know you have a five-run lead. And, you know, you don't you don't want to just throw it right down a pipe, but then on the other hand, you'll body and uh, you know Holloman certainly not going away. This is a uh, it's a real confidence for them. You know, it's just credit to their ability. They didn't walk up here and drag their heads oh, in the no. bottom of the seventh down six-one. They came up here fighting and said, "Let's get make something happen." And they're really laying off that rise ball too. They're making sure it's in the zone. Good eye by Delio. And again, Fisher falls behind the hitter. Just a little impatient right now. Very, you know, very natural. You're wanting to get it over faster <laughs> than you can. Just, Just get me out of here. Yeah. That ball, very nice pitch. There's the strike, two and one. Just uh, trying to throw a strike here on a 2-0 count. This is a fastball right down a pipe. And she's taken all the way, as she should be in that situation. That ball's gonna fall in unless it's nope. grabbed by right. Oh, nice great pitch, could be a double play ball game. Does she have her foot on? No. Nope. What a nice catch by Amy Sinclair. There's the young lady you talked about making an impact. Has a hit, made a great catch. Make a play. You know, and that's a situation there where you throw the ball in the strike zone. You know, tell Laura Fisher there, and let your defense help you. Let them make a play. You know, and it's, um, you know, they, the Lady Warriors really have put all three aspects of the game together tonight. You know, the great pitching, which has got them to a point here within the tournament with two really good ball games earlier. And then, um, you know, some great defensive plays. And then, um, you know, tonight they turned the bats loose there in four or five situations. I thought they hit the ball really well. So we're down to one out. Well, I tell you, if I'm uh, Coach Jay Hatch tonight, I sure want this young lady up to bat. Mm -hmm. She's two for three. Outstanding hitter. I really like her swing. It's right up there in front of the box, up there and get the rise ball before it has a chance to jump. And, uh, you know, she knows what she's doing. She'll be right on this ball. You mentioned her compact swing. She's going to make her pitch. They're really watching. It's interesting. You know, they've been pretty much first ball, uh, you know, they've been going after that first pitch, and they're laying off of it a little right. bit. By the last inning or two, you know, you're down five runs. You need base runners. you got to take a strike in that situation, try to get a couple people on. And there's Roberts, and a few times she's bobbled ball, but the gun, and Hickox holds it up and said, this is it, folks, I'm a senior, and we are the state champs. Casey Westfield repeats his number one, and Dave Shover signals number one up here to Denny Thronberg. It's his first. And Lady Westfield Warriors 
six to one. Well, it may be a new millennium, but the champion is champion is similar. Casey Westfield, six to one over Rock Island Allum in a terrific game. And let's take a look at the Pepsi player of the game who was voted the MVP by the writers here at the tournament. Laura Fisher, the sophomore pitcher from Casey Westfield. Outstanding uh, player. Uh, like I said, I'm very close to her. We've thrown uh, many, many pitches together here. And uh, her dad has done uh, such a wonderful job of catching her. And uh, Dave's done a great job with her this spring. And, uh, you know, they, they played really well. And I'm really proud of her and uh, glad to see her win that award. You can read lips. She said, I'm so happy. And there's a look at the game summary. Well, you know, you take a glance at that. Three runs scored on airs. I think I said before the game, who will blink? And, uh, you know, that, that's one of the things you have to be aware of. Of course, Aaron Montgomery gets a big RBI triple. Um, you know, I, I thought, uh, you know, Burt played extremely well. She's got a great swing for Alleman. And uh, you go back to just that one little situation with runners at second, third, and one out. And uh, uh, Tracy Roberts makes two big plays. Or, you know, it's, it's a different ball game. And, and you look at the runners left on base. You know, Alleman leaves eight runners on base. And, uh, you know, and we talked earlier about capitalizing on your opportunities. The Lady Warriors leave only two runners on base. So, obviously, they capitalized well. Alleman leaves eight and uh, you look back on it you know hindsight's great great sight but uh, you know when it was two to one runners at second and third it looked like they might get a couple and they didn't and then Casey Westfield came in and got two and all of a sudden it's four to one you see it was a different game well they may have changed coaches and Dave Shover gets his first <laughs> state championship but uh, the programs at Alleman and Casey Westfield continue to reign supreme in this new millennium as we close out this year so for Denny Thronberg, I'm Ann Penstone saying so long from Middle Springs Park in Pekin, Illinois. You've been watching the 2000 IHSA Class A Softball Championship on Fox Sports Net and Intersport Television.